Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today I need to make a crowd pleaser dessert and what I mean by that is we have people coming for dinner tomorrow that we haven't eaten with before so I don't know if they like sweet stuff like chocolate and candy or savoury things like cheese and crackers or maybe even healthy desserts like fruit, I like fruit. So I'm just going to get a few things and chuck them in my trolley and take them home and see what we can make that will please everyone. Okay, to start with, I'm going to break up all of that chocolate and tip it into a big bowl and then temper it. Mix some of that in a smaller bowl with some tempered white chocolate so that you end up with two slightly different toned colours of chocolate. And then also temper some dark chocolate and drizzle it across some baking paper. Now the baking paper here needs to be completely flat in the bottom of a baking tray and it needs to have some decent height to the sides of the tray. Because what I'm wanting to do here is make like a chopping board or a wooden board out of chocolate. Then drizzle the middle toned chocolate and some white chocolate over the top, making sure you're always going lengthwise across the pan, letting it drizzle over the edges of the pan as well, just always in the one direction like the grain of wood. And as I said before, make sure your chocolate is tempered, otherwise it's not going to stay set at room temperature. If you don't know what I mean by tempered, watch my chocolate secrets video. I'll link to the chocolate playlist at the end. It explains how to do that there. Then pour in about two thirds of the rest of the tempered milk chocolate over the top and carefully spread it out. Again, trying to only move in a lengthwise direction across the length of the pan, not in swirls or they're in the other direction. Use your spatula to spread the chocolate all the way to the edges and up the sides of each edge. I'm going to make one end dried fruits and nuts and freeze-dried strawberries and a little bit of ginger just to keep all the adults happy. Load lots of that in there. That looks great. And then the other end I'm filling with candy and Oreos, caramels, honeycomb. This should get the kids excited. Now we want to hide all of that by pouring over the rest of the tempered chocolate and spread it out to cover everything. Those freeze dried strawberries keep floating to the top, just try and push them down a bit and then put that in the fridge. Once it's set, take a knife and scrape along the chocolate at the level of the top of your tin so that the bottom is completely flat. You don't want any bumps from Oreos or those freeze dried strawberries that kept floating. Hang on to these scrapings, just put them in a jar in the fridge because they're great on top of ice cream. Now we can't leave this open like this because if you leave the freeze dried strawberries exposed to the air, they'll go soft instead of crunchy, which is not what we want. So just pour on a little bit more tempered chocolate and spread that out back and forth all the way over your chocolate. And then use a spatula to flatten it and make it all nice and level with the top of the tin. And then again, we're just gonna leave that to set in the fridge. Once it is set, let's flip that upside down, give it a bit of a push. It's not coming out, it's stuck. Hmm, it has to come out or it's not gonna work for my dessert. Let's flip it over again and jiggle it and I'm hoping that the weight of the chocolate here is gonna help it come out of the tin. Yay, it came out and it didn't break, which is what I was worried about. Peel back that paper and don't worry, this is not what it's gonna look like when it's finished, it's just a starting point. Use a metal spatula or you could use a knife just to scrape back the chocolate to give it a bit more of a wood look rather than drizzled chocolate lines. Once you've scraped an even amount off the whole thing, spread a really thin coating of dark chocolate over the top. This is a bit like adding a stain to your wood. It needs to be thin enough that you can still see some of the wood grain underneath it, but it just softens the effect. That's starting to look a bit more like wood now, but we need to add some texture. So just take your knife and run it down the chocolate, trying to pay attention to where the variations in your color is. So if there's a darker patch, try and follow that line that you're doing with your knife along the edge of your darker patch for your wood grain. 
Now take a spatula again and just gently run it across the surface. You're not wanting to take much off this time. You're just highlighting that wood grain that you drew with the knife. See how that just really brings it up. And now scraped chocolate looks quite rough and quite matte. It doesn't look very shiny like a polished board would. So the trick to fix that is to put some paper towel in iced water and then gently rub it over the surface of your chocolate. While that's drying, wash your fresh fruit. Figs always look good on a platter. I don't really like the taste of them though, do you? And then unwrap your cheeses. I did consider making fake cheeses out of chocolate and I was going to do that, but then I thought if you're a savory lover and you really like cheese and I brought it to the table, you'd be really disappointed that it was all chocolate. No cheese, Gromit. So I'm gonna keep the board sweet and there is a lot of chocolate in that and keep the cheese savory. For wedges of cheese, try and choose ones which have their names on the wax so people know what they're eating. And now it's time to put it all together. Put the Jarlsberg wedge there. Then the weird tasting but cool looking figs can go next to it there. Then a good chunk of cheddar. That black wax looks great. Next, we've got a wedge of Gouda that can go there. And every good cheese platter has to have a soft cheese. So we'll put a circle of camembert there. That will be perfect for that. And for some variety, a wedge of this Wensleydale with cranberries that can go in the corner. Then a bit of fresh fruit, a little bit more. Do you think they'll notice the board at first or will they just be looking at the cheese? I wonder how long it'll take them to figure it out. We're definitely gonna need some crackers. Just place them on the side. That one's stuck together, split that up and a few little nuts. And the cheese platter is ready to be served. And an update for you, everyone was happy eating this, relaxed and enjoying the dessert. From the youngest guest who was so cute and he was only three years old, right through to the teenagers and the adults, everyone had something on it that they loved, which for me was the fruit and the chocolate. For others, it was the cheese and the crackers and most people just liked every single thing that was in it, except for the figs, of course. I told you they were weird. One very popular addition to the chocolate was the ginger in the fruit and nut end. So make sure you add some of that if you're making this. Click here to see more chocolate creations, here for the latest video and here to subscribe. Make it a great week by being thankful for what you have and I'll see you on Friday.